first, you're the first, you're the alpha, maker of the earth. By your word, by your word, you created life out of the dirt. Welcome home. 
Hello everyone and welcome to Church at Home. Hello Trey. Hi Ricky. It's good to see you again. Oh, Another too. week. Love it. Of being in your homes. <laughs> Not in a creepy now way. The, <laughs> yeah. Now the weather has changed a bit this week. I know. At the start of the week it was like summer and I love summer. I, I love, love the sun. summer. I'm with you. Uh, but there's some perks to the cold. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, jackets. I have a wardrobe full of jackets. <laughs> Beth has no room in the wardrobe. It's just all my jackets and I can just take out a different one each day. Josh has one jacket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's his entire jacket game. <laughs> Look, I'm glad to see you're in your happy place. I yeah. do love your jacket. I love my jacket That's too. It's nice. I wore a jacket today yeah. too. I thought nice well. I better wear something other than a jumper. Yeah. It was nice last week getting dressed up. It, it was good. good. It yeah. was fun. Yeah. It was. Maybe we could have a theme each week with jackets this week. Okay. Maybe next week we could wear fun hats. Yeah, I'm, I'm all for that. We'll see. I have lots of jackets and fun hats. <laughs> you do. <so. laughs> oh, and hey, it's been a good week. It has have been a very good week. Have you seen all the, the schedule of all the beautiful I online have. I have. live moments? Yeah, and there's a lot. How Did you enjoy Marcy's? Yes. I did. Marcy's, what was it? Words that changed my life. Yeah. I love that. My favourite part of that was the words about her dinner and having burgers. <laughs> so, did that change your life? Yeah, did that change your dinner? Changed my life because I ate burgers. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Marcy. You're making a real impact. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it's just awesome to see how church is adapting and bringing live moments mm. into our weeks yeah. so that we can still feel connected. Yeah. It's so cool. So there are so many great things going on. Monday through to Friday. It's awesome. It's I chopped. love it. It's good. And if you didn't know that it was going on, make sure you sign up uh, for church news and follow us on our socials and you'll never miss another thing. Never. It'll be okay. You'll, you'll be in the I can't loop. promise that actually, but <laughs> <laughs> you're less likely to chance. miss another thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's just been so awesome to see how all these people um, within the church are adapting and, and doing new and creative things yeah. to make sure people feel connected and loved um, in this time. So if you've noticed someone doing something amazing or being extra creative, make sure that you still uphold our value of encouragement. And you can do that through the link. And hey, we believe in the power of prayer. Um, we believe in a God that is on our side, that is yeah. got our back. You know, and we've, if you feel like you need prayer for anything, we've got a massive team of people ready to pray with you. All you gotta do is click the link um, and they're keen as, they're ready to go. Ready and waiting. Yeah. I love it. And Ricky, there have been so many beautiful stories coming out of this season. You know, it's so nice to see the silver linings, to see the people who are doing great things yeah. in, you know, what can be a dark time. Because of our amazing, generous people, we've been able to put uh, together so many grocery packs for families who are in need, um, including one from one of the local high schools. Wow. Yeah, it's That's really amazing. Beautiful. So good. It is amazing yeah. <laughs> and even more amazing and going above and beyond. There's an incredible mum um, who we won't name names, but I love her. And she's been making cupcakes to go with these packs just as an extra blessing oh, for wow. people. And I was lucky enough to get one of those packs of cupcakes because our life is pretty hectic at the moment. Yeah. It oh, was, yeah. Yeah, but it was so that. beautiful <laughs> to have this like, not only dinner delivered for the night, like cooked and made, but Incredible. this just beautiful thing of cupcakes. And yeah. it's just lovely to see yeah. how our people are going above and beyond yeah, it's so good. and being generous in yeah. this season. Now I can go cupcake. I know, right? <laughs> I Let's get cupcakes after this. That's been talking about cupcake, cupcakes all week. <laughs> it's a true story. I've been thinking about cupcakes all week. There we go. <laughs> we but should you bake know, cupcakes. Let's do we? that. <laughs> cool, cool segment. Yeah, I like it. Baking with Ricky and Tree. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of cupcakes, this is actually not to do with cupcakes, yeah. but um, it's just beautiful to hear these stories of how yeah. people are being generous. Yeah, it's really um, good. And you know, it's just so important for us to continue to be generous as yeah. a church, not yeah. only to the people around us, but yeah. you know, to be continue to support the church. And yeah. you can do that um, with the details provided. Yeah, awesome. That's so good. And Trey, how good was last week? The series on calm. Amazing. Marcy knocking that one out of the park. Oh, she's so it was good. A tear jerker. It was. Yeah. It was just so beautiful. It was very moving. And so many of us have been needing mm. this series in yeah. our lives right now yeah. and I just it's been awesome we've had so much good feedback I want to read you a little something that Please someone do. sent in uh, what a timely series to be taking us through thank you this season has shown me how much of a control freak I am thank God we can let go and be carried and what a beautifully sung song by Hannah that has reminded us of all God's constant goodness presence and peace mm. hashtag putting that on repeat yeah definitely Hannah Locke oh, that one out of the park as well. she's that was incredible, incredible. Oh my what goodness. an anointed voice yeah Speaking of anointed voices oh. and amazing worship, we're going to get into worship soon, next, yeah. in fact. Cool. And I can't wait, to be honest. Yeah, I'm excited. And Rick's going to continue the series with Ask God for Help. Help? Oh, not now. No. Okay, let's do this. Good morning, church. Jump up, join us in worship and praise. Every day I wake up, be by my side When I hear your heartbeat, I come alive Whoa, whoa, I come alive Jesus be the first thought inside my head 
Lord, we thank You that You are Alpha and You are Omega. We thank You that You come first and last in our lives. We put You first in our worship to You, Lord God.
So welcome everyone to this chilly Sunday and thanks for joining us for Church at Home. Uh, kia ora to my Kiwi brothers, uh, welcome to my Africana friends and morning true if you're listening in from Papua New Guinea. Let us know in the comments section uh, where you're from and we'll try and uh, give you a mention next time we're online. I also want to give a shout out to my family and friends who are watching from home, uh, especially as I said, if this is your first time, uh, you're very welcome. As a church family, we've been thinking about what to think in this season where our thinking has been confused, uh, sometimes by circumstances beyond our control. Last week, if you were with us, you would have seen Marcy uh, talk about the start of a new series called Calm. Um, and uh, she used a phrase which was common uh, to British people called keep calm and carry on, or keep calm and carry on. Uh, and she used the C in the word calm, which was an acrostic for meaning C is for celebrate. And she chatted to us about what it means for people of faith to celebrate God's goodness, even in tough times. Well, today we're going to continue that train of thought and consider what it means for people of faith to let their requests be known to God, to ask God, particularly in tough times. My dad used to say to me, Rick, don't worry until you have to. And so like most people, I would then go around worrying about when it was okay for me to worry. So um, I think as an intellectual exercise, most people can work things out for themselves and keep away from worry. But what happens when worry comes knocking uninvited to your door? We know that feeling. You know, there's the grip on the heart where we turn on the six o'clock news and yet another tragedy has happened. There's that, that cold numbness that you feel when you get an adverse medical diagnosis or that, that uh, shock that, that hits you when you suddenly lose a loved one or someone close to you that you know. Um, there's also the confusion that comes to us sometimes when our plans and dreams are you know, bushwhacked by circumstances. So how do we cope in these scenarios? And what do we do when worry and anxiety weigh us down? We all know people who seem to be calm even in the worst of times. You know, people who experience tough situations but don't seem to buckle under the strain. We, we know leaders who are a calm and consistent and reassuring voice even in the midst of uh, social storms. In my lifetime, I can think of people like Mother Teresa, um, I can think uh, currently even of Queen Elizabeth or our own PM, Scott Morrison, really standing in difficult times, but doing so with grace and poise. Now, such people are not superhuman, um, but are a calming voice in adversity, I think, because they call on resources that are outside of themselves. One of the greatest leaders of the first century undoubtedly was the Apostle Paul. He wrote most of the New Testament. And he wrote about what it means to have faith uh, and to be calm in a storm. He wrote to the early church, the church at Philippi was where it was located, and he wrote this. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. So do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Now, we'll expand on that idea of thanksgiving, thanksgiving in adversity next time. But for now, let's note that the word he uses here is gentleness. And that means an attitude that is fitting of the occasion or the moment. It's a seasoned comment, a mature and level-headed response. Easy to say, hard to do. But notice also that Paul has a linking phrase there, which is the Lord is near. That's the key to what he's saying about being calm in the storm. He says that we can be calm and not anxious about anything because God is near. Uh, and when we live with that certainty, other people notice and are actually reassured when they see that we're not panicking. You could say that those who draw on the resources of heaven have a contagious calm about them. It's the leader who says, um, let's do our part and we'll be okay. 
It's the leader who lives the reality of that calmness themselves and says, these are tough times, but we will get through this. Even in our darkest days, we are not alone. Now, we may feel alone. We may think that we're alone, but there really is never a moment when we are on our own because God, the Apostle Paul tells us, is near. I can remember the first time that this dawned on me. I was a young man going to church for the first or second time. I I wasn't raised in a family like that, but I found myself in church and was listening to a pastor who was talking about a Christmas story. And he said something like, Jesus was called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Now, I'd only ever thought before that of God on high or aloof or, you know, grandfatherly looking down at us, certainly not being with us. But here was this pastor backed up by the words of the Bible saying that God actually came to us. God came to me. And and this profoundly changed my worldview, changed my world of God, uh, my view of God, changed my view of life. And I still find it really comforting to know that God came to me and is with me and is still near me, even though in the circumstances of life, I might not always feel that. The idea of closeness to God is also common in the biblical Psalms. And some of you may be uh, familiar with a few of those, you know, the, uh, the, the uh, shepherd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And there are, there are many other ones that are familiar to people. Um, the Jewish King David wrote most of the Psalms uh, as a personal reflection on his experiences, his own experiences with the closeness and the love of God. And you can see that reflected in the power of his poetry. Now, in saying that, his life was not easy. In fact, at one point, uh, the king who was king before he came, uh, David came to power, was actually wanting to kill him and sent assassins to find him. So David left and hid in a cave. So he wasn't, he didn't have the perfect life. Um, but he was able still to look to God in those circumstances beyond what was immediate. And that's when he wrote Psalm 142 which says in part at the beginning, I cry out to the Lord for mercy. It's an attitude, it's a a practice that is known um, amongst Christians as lament. Uh, It's a crying out to the God who is with us for help. It's it's not blaming God. Why did you do this, God? It's not begging God, oh, please, please, please. It's bringing God into our circumstances. Lamenting is reflecting uh, our circumstances to a God who is already near to us. And I I love the Bible from early days when I first came to faith. Uh, I loved it because it was about real people, you know, with, with real concerns calling out to a God who is really close and who really loves them. Um, And this process of lament is actually a pattern of faith that that Christians, maturing Christians, will try and adopt as they go through life. And this can make such a difference in our lives. It's not a hollow just believing something. It's it's a lament. It's bringing God into our circumstances and, and talking to him about that because he knows and he cares. Lament is an ancient practice that we can do today when we are worried or anxious or fearful about life situations. So let's look at a few things um, which will explain what that actually looks like. How do we actually do this uh, if we're practicing lament today? Well, the first thing that the Apostle Paul says is that we need to turn to God. Lament isn't something we do on our own. Uh, Lament is turning to God. But if you're like me, it's not the first thing that I always do when I'm in trouble. You know, we often avoid asking for help, uh, like men who are trying to find their way and they don't have their GPS and I've got one of those old fashioned Melways books and their wife is trying to tell them, turn left here and they don't listen and then they get lost, but then they don't want to ask for help because they're too embarrassed. You know how it goes. Hands up all the men who have ever felt that driving around. But we often avoid asking for help, even in life situations. 
we pretend it's not happening. Or worse, we seek temporary relief in the distractions um, of uh, substances and other unhealthy things. Or sometimes we, we blame other people for our circumstances. We can even blame God himself. But here's the thing. We can turn to God because he first turned to us. And this is one of the things that really reset my idea about what faith was. I wasn't doing God a favor by talking to him. Is that I can turn to him because he first turned to me through the life of Jesus, by sending Jesus to us. And, and he delights when we turn to him. I heard a scholar or read a scholar during the week who said, God likes the sound of your voice. I was very encouraged by that, that God would like the sound of my voice, even if I'm lamenting to him, even if I'm bringing a worry or a concern. God likes the sound of my voice. He wants to hear from me. God wants to hear from you when you're in difficult circumstances. And in the act of seeking him, we are by default acknowledging him as God. And not only that, he is God, but he is able. Well, after turning to God, the second thing that the Bible recommends is that we tell him the truth. We tell him the truth. We don't have to soft sell the problem or sugarcoat the reality. And you might say, well, you know, why do I have to tell God anything if he knows everything already anyway? And it's like this. It's when we speak the truth, when we're honest, we're aligning our souls with his heart. We're bringing God into the situation. And God is good and God is faithful. The third thing that we need to do when we're practicing lament, when we're seeking God's help at this time, is that we need to trust in God. Too often in my life, I've asked God for something or I've you know, shared something that was troubling me and it's almost like I've immediately said, oh, don't worry about it, God, I've got this and I've taken it all back. You know, I can just see God patiently saying, you know, don't give it to me, then pull it back. Just leave it with me. Trust me with this. You can see this at the end of that psalm if you, if you get to read it, Psalm 142 that we mentioned before that King David wrote. He says he trusts that God will deal generously with him. So he comes to God with his concerns and then he trusts that God will deal generously with him. Why? Because God is good and God is faithful. You know, we need to learn from the psalmist that to lament is to learn to trust him. And in that trust, we realize that we are not alone and we realize that he wants to help. And so our joy is rekindled, our hope is restored as we wait for God to step in to the situation. And he just doesn't listen to our lament. God wants to help. God is on our side. He wants to do something with us and through us and for us. God likes you. We can be calm in the midst of storms because God is near uh, and he is for us. So would you pray with me now? Uh, just ahead of uh, listening to Rachel sing a beautiful song about God being for us and being on our side. Uh, would you pray with me? Lord, we thank you that we can be calm in the midst of storms because God is near. We, we thank you that Jesus is on our side, that he came to us, that he is Emmanuel, not just at Christmas time, but every day of the year. We thank you, Lord, because Jesus listens to us and wants to help us and by the power of his Holy Spirit has the ability to step into our lives and bring a reassuring peace even when circumstances can't be changed. Lord, we thank you that you want us to lament, to ask you for help, to turn to you, to talk to you, to trust you. And uh, Lord, at this time when the world is suffering from a pandemic and many people are you know, locked in homes and isolated. Lord, you see that situation, you know that situation, and you want to bring peace to us while this medical situation changes. And we just thank you for that. We thank you that you are here with us in ISO. We thank you that you never leave us or forsake us. 
we thank you that you like the sound of our voice and that we can ask you for help. We thank you for all that you are, you are and what you are doing in Jesus' name. Amen.
Come on, God is good. Oh, so good, I love that. That was refreshing. I know, and it's so powerful, isn't it, just to be reminded of how much our God loves us yeah. and that He's close to us. I know I need reminding of that mm. all the time. <laughs> you know, that He's near to us even in the hard times and that all we need to do is just be still and yeah. let Him love us. Yeah, yeah. So good. You know, if you want to know more or you'd like to connect further with us, um, all you have to do is click click the connect with us link and we'd love to hear from you. We'd love it. And Tree. Yes. Next week is Mother's Day. How did you know? I knew. <laughs> I've been counting down to this. <laughs> counting down. You are a gifts person. I am. And a mother. And a, yeah. Well, both important things. Yes, they are. <laughs> you know what? We've got a really, really special service planned. Yes, we have. It's going to be sick. Putting lots of time and effort into planning this. Yeah, because we have lots of time. Oh, so, for sure. So. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. But mums deserve to be loved. And if they there's do. ever they a do. season where mums need a really good Mother's Day, Definitely. it is this Definitely. one. Definitely, yep. <laughs> so, Absolutely. right, I'm just giving you a little lecture now. Everybody, make sure you are thinking about how you're going to look after your mum, how you're going to love on her, what you're going to get her, and what all, like the mother of your children. Josh, yep. just, just what are you doing? Have you got plans? Sure. Sure. No, yeah. no I, <laughs> I may. You may. Yeah. Look, I'll give you some ideas. I have time. Lots of presents, <laughs> yeah. chocolate, wine, champagne fountain maybe. Yep, I don't okay. know. Just there's some just spitballing here. Yeah, I um, like it. But we look, we want to bless some some special mums yep. in the community as well. And if you know a mum that deserves an extra special Mother's mm -hmm. Day, please head to Facebook and let us know because we want to bless some mums out there. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Definitely. Is it all right if I become a mum for this? Um, I don't think it works like that, Ricky. Oh, I like gifts. Yeah, you do. Father's Day. It'll be your time. Okay. We'll get when there. Is, it's going to be beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and Rick and Marcy are doing a Q&A over on Insta Live after this. So grab a coffee and yes. head there for all of the goss. Yes, I love them. Good. They're so great. Yeah. It's been so lovely, hasn't it? it has Hanging out, lovely. doing church together. Just chilling. And we'll do it again next week. Yeah. So we'll see you next Sunday, 10am for Church at Home. See you then.